Well, I finally got my hands on the brand new Canon RF 24105 2.8. I've got to let you know what I think as a wedding photographer, as a portrait photographer. I have to say, I don't know if I'm going to get in trouble for this video because I just don't know. While you're watching this, go ahead and hit subscribe. You can be done by the time I get back on screen. Did you do it, Marshall? Did you hit subscribe? Thank you so much for being here. This is a lens that I've had a lot of people message me about because it is the world's first 24 to 105 lens at a fixed 2.8 aperture. And if you know anything about my work, one of my favorite lenses is the 28 to 70 F2 lens. And I find it to be just an absolute gem for weddings. There's even a video I have here about it's the lens that rules them all. I think I've actually done two videos reviewing that lens because I think it's awesome. So when this 24 to 105 came out at a 2.8 aperture, a lot of people are thinking that this is really going to be the lens that trumps everything. It's going to be the lens that's perfect for weddings, for events, for reality shows, just anything where it's a run and gun type situation. I didn't want to actually give my opinion on it until I had the chance to use it. And Alan's camera just two days ago outside of Philly. Philadelphia. I was able to use it really for a whopping half an hour, but I was able to get my hands on it, get the feel of the lens, shoot with it all the way through, you know, 24 to 105, going down to the 2.8 aperture and really have a chance to determine if it's something that I think would be good for my workflow. Now I have to start off by saying, I do enjoy shooting more wide open, so I do have a biased 2.8. Seems like it's pretty low or pretty wide open on the aperture scale, but there is a big difference between 2.8 and f2. Let me talk to you about some of the great things about this lens. First of all, it is the world's first 2.8 fixed aperture with that wide range, 24 to 105. Everything you need on an event or on a family shoot portrait session, I mean, that range of 24 to 105 is wildly popular, which is why the F4 version of the lens, both the EF and the RF, has been bought by the majority of photographers out there. It's a great range for me as a wedding photographer. I know I'm going to be able to use that range when shooting in a reception reception. Just think about the first dance. I can get wides of the couple on the dance floor in the entire room, and then I can zoom into the two of them and get a close-up of their faces. Or during toasts, I can get the whole room or the people just standing there with the couple and the person standing there giving the toast and then zoom in to somebody's reaction, laughing or crying across the room. That kind of range is incredible. Just not having to switch lenses to get that kind of range, it's unprecedented at 2.8. But here's the thing. It's a really big lens, as it should be. It needs to be a big lens. It's about the feel of the EF 70-200 to 2.8 lens. To me, when I held it, that's exactly what it felt like I was holding. It is a little bit lighter, coming in around three pounds, than the RF 28-70 F2 lens that I do walk around and hold all day. So I don't think weight necessarily is a problem. I was speaking to a friend of mine recently, Marissa Levin. We were talking about it just this morning about how the lens is a bigger lens. And while it's nice for the formalities of the day during the ceremony, maybe family photos, portrait session, and the parts of the reception that we talk about, we were talking about using it for party dancing. And a lot of us photographers like to hold the camera above the crowd and take a shot like that with a wider lens. And to be honest, you just can't do that with this lens. It's too heavy. When you're holding it up like this, it's gonna, you know, hang down quite a bit, honestly, potentially hitting somebody in the face versus if you're doing it with like the RF 16 millimeter 2.8, it's a perfect lens for doing that, or even the 24 to 105 F4. So, and plus there's the weight. If you're gonna hold it up like that, that's a serious amount of weight. So in your head, that range might work really nicely, but the weight of it will come into play. Now, I don't think the weight of it is going to come into play Overall, I tend to think the weight of the lens is worth it if it's helping you speed up what you're shooting, if you don't miss moments because you don't have to change lenses, and if it's replacing lenses in your bag so ultimately your camera bag is not as heavy. That's why I love the RF 28 to 70 so much because it does exactly that. And if that lens is a little bit heavier than this RF 24 to 105 2.8, then 
I don't have a leg to stand on when it comes there. I think that's great. Now shooting with this lens, it does have a beautiful quality to it. It has an 11 blade aperture. You know, you can get that smooth, gorgeous bokeh in the background going all the way to 105 at 2.8. I think it's a beautiful portrait lens. I did get to try it out only in dark circumstances though, which is good. I had the 2.8. I think you get to try it out in natural light, which is really where I would have preferred to try it out. I think I would have liked to have that kind of space. And to be super honest, I tried it out while there were like a hundred people watching me take pictures and I'm trying to show how to pose and light and all these things. So admittedly, I didn't have the best tryout, but I'm not complaining. I am one of the first people to have even had this in my hands and been able to shoot with it because while this is a pre-production lens, all the images that you're seeing is pre-production. Keep that in mind. But I do think the image quality was great overall. Let's talk about some of the other aspects of this lens. Something that is really unique on it, it has the iris lens aperture on the lens, which just reminds me of back in the day when we had to change our aperture by changing it on the lens. I do believe you can only use this on video so that it's like a smooth change, but that's really a absolutely huge factor because if you're doing video that click when you're changing your settings it looks absolutely horrible in the video and you have to cut around it or let it be in there and then not really like it which brings me to my next point i think this lens is a powerhouse for any videographer because of that smooth changing aperture on the lens because of the range and because it does have a tripod mount on it so just like you would use the 70 to 200 and mount it with a tripod ring i think this lens is going to become an absolute staple for so many videographers whether you're shooting corporate events uh, my husband mentioned he would be really excited to use it for the reality show that he films here in austin it's a run and gun lens and then having that smooth smooth aperture change capability during video recording. Just it's the icing on top of the cake. Your maximum magnification is 0.29 X at the 105 millimeter zoom setting. And then your focusing range as close as you can get, you can get to just under 1.5 feet at all focal lengths. Now it's not macro, so you're probably gonna still need to have a macro lens if you're trying to get close to that, or maybe you're doing product photography, but that's not so bad 1.5 feet across the board from 24 to 105. If you wanna see this lens used in more of a studio setting, I highly recommend checking out Lindsay Adler's video on this. She did a phenomenal shoot that she took incredible photos, natural light, as well as, uh, you know, flash. I think she went outside. There are a ton of great images that you can look at there Honestly, she had a chance to use it a lot more than I did. So if you want to see more examples, definitely check out the video that she did, the official launch video for Canon for this lens. Now, this optional zoom power adapter, that's also going to be something that videographers really love. Having that ability to camcorder style zoom in and out with the power zoom, that's going to be, again, something that videographers are really going to love. I don't see me using that as a photographer by any stretch of the imagination, but again, it leans this more towards a video centric lens in my opinion. One of the best things about this lens, I think is the fact that it has image stabilization. And that is key for a lot of people, especially if you're pairing it with a camera that has IBIS in body image stabilization, you're gonna get up to eight stops of image stabilization. And we all know that can really be a lifesaver, getting you nice, clean, crisp images when you have to be in a low light setting with a slower aperture. Aperture. Or maybe you just want to create something interesting with a slower aperture and get to a higher f-stop. Having image stabilization is going to allow you to do that really, really easily. The two nano USM focusing drive motors is again something that a lot of videographers are going to appreciate being able to zoom and maintain that smooth focus without any of the jumpiness that could potentially hurt a video. And finally, like you would expect from any L lens, you have the durability and the weather sealing. The zooming with this lens happens internally, so you don't have it externally zooming and moving around. It is a larger lens, like I mentioned. It is about the size of a 70 to 200, so you have to think about that when you're gonna pack it in your bag. Now let's go ahead, and before I tell you whether I will personally be buying this lens or not, I want to talk about the price. This is a whopping $3,000. And do I think it's worth $3,000 for a video? Run and gun, yes. 
I do. I absolutely do because this is a lens that replaces so many different lenses. You're not going to need a 28 to 70. You're not going to need that old 24 to 105 f4. Now, does it replace the prime lenses? I don't know. And that zoom, that's another thousand dollars. So I have to say, I don't think it replaces prime lenses like the 28 to 70 F2 does. That lens to me, replacing prime lenses, it's that zoom that acts like a prime. To me, that lens is replacing three of my primes, the 24, the 35, and the 50 millimeter prime lenses. That is absolutely worth it for me as a photographer. It's like a thousand dollars per lens if you look at it that way. And then all those prime lenses added up are more than $3,000. To me, that lens is a no-brainer. There's also the difference between f2 and f2.8. And I know it sounds ridiculous, and I know it seems like, well, that's not much of a difference. But quite frankly, it just is. It just is for me and my aesthetic and how I like my photos to look or how I'm constantly in low light and going all the way down to f2. 2.8 in some circumstances, just doesn't cut it for me. I personally do not think I will be adding this lens to my arsenal. However, that's not to say it may or may not be for the majority of wedding photographers out there. If you are somebody that loves the 24 to 105 F4, get this lens. Get this lens 100 times over. Get it now. Pre-order it. Get a backup. This lens is absolutely for you. If you're a videographer shooting reality shows, corporate events, weddings, 100%, this lens is for you. Go pre-order it. Go get it right now. But if you're a photographer that really shines in that wide open type style, I don't think this is the lens that's going to make you ultimately happy. I think the RF 28 to 70 is the one that will make you ultimately happy. And by the way, I'm going to try to edit this as soon as possible. I don't know if these sales are still going on, but that 28 to 70 is now $500 rebate. $500 rebate on that thing. So it's only $2,500 right now. So if you love that bright and airy style, I highly suggest you could get that lens at $500 off right now. However, if you are a photographer that shoots at 2.8 all the time, I think this lens is an absolute steal for you because you're going to be able to keep this lens on like all day long. In fact, if you have this 24 to 105 lens and then pair it with the 7200, you're bringing two lenses on your jobs and that's it. And that's absolutely all you need if you're cool at shooting 2.8 and not wanting to go lower than that. So with that in mind, I think this lens reinvents the previous trinity of lenses because the previous trinity of high-end L lenses was the RF or the F 15 to 35, 2.8. And then you had the 28 to 70 and then the 7,200. I think this one, 24 to 105, then have the 70 to 200 and then just get that RF 16 millimeter 2.8 for those ultra wide shots that you need. That's it. I mean, you can't even count that 16 millimeter as a lens because it's so small. It's like, it's not a pancake lens, but it's like as big as the top of my mug here. <laughs> and it's pretty much just as light and it takes gorgeous images. I mean, this image right here of my beautiful ballerina here uh, was taken with that lens. So if you love that 2.8 maximum aperture opening, get this lens get it right away, pair it with the 7200 and now you are walking around with a very light bag overall and not having to change your lenses hardly at all. And I think that is key, especially when you're shooting events. All right, let's jump in. I know you're gonna wanna see these images and see what they look like. Let's pixel peep just a little bit to see how these images hold up. This is an image, uh, it was just a random image that I was taking the first second I got it. All the Canon people are really happy that I have them in here. Uh, ISO 4000 all the way out. Now I can definitely say like you're seeing the curvature here. Um, you're at 24. So of course you're going to see the curvature. That's, that's a no brainer. Obviously that's going to happen, but this was taken at 8,000. <laughs> Some of the attendees there again, they see this, this is going to be super thrilled. Uh, so this was taken at 8,000. I was shooting on the R6 Mark II. Uh, so this is a pretty good, uh, you know, kind of view now this let's go to 100 percent. there's 100 percent right there at you know 8000 iso at 83 so that's kind of like your mid level range and then let's go ahead and get to some of these portraits right here okay so this is a good example 85 millimeter f2.8 
not totally compressed in but pretty close here and you get like a little bit of that that bouquet bokeh in the background this is where we were at 105 millimeter at 2.8 got the bokeh balls in the back you know it's not that bad it's it's pretty good having having that you know you're getting that compression you're getting those little bits in the background there here we were shooting with the same 105 and this is the part where i'm going to say this lens really excels the fact that i could be here at 24 millimeters and again we can see some of the curvature and this isn't the cleanest shot in the world because you can see my tether and everything else um, but the fact that i could be here one second at 24 and then zoom all the way in that's only at 68 and then there i got to 105 here like that that's where the gold is that's where you can zoom in and out get a close-up get a mid-range i had backed up by this point all in one step let me just export my favorite photos i'm gonna give you a finished image here if you haven't used evoto or haven't heard me talk about it i absolutely love this program it's one of the final things that i do i tend to edit in lightroom because it's more familiar to me um, and then i pull everything into evoto even though evoto now has color correction with ai it is such a great program for bulk retouching and it now just came out with being able to retouch hair and it is just oh it's so good it's so much time I can't even explain all right so let's just plop in some of my favorite photos I'm gonna put one of my presets my presets on here do 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 Vanessa portrait right there look at this all right so before and after I think I want a little bit more all right I'm gonna come into freckle and acne uh, not that she has any but just gonna smooth out this area here a little bit you can just see it in the before and after it automatically does a little bit of slimming I don't necessarily love doing that to be honest I'm actually gonna take that off I think that's something that's really subjective and you only do that when your clients ask for it she has some flyaway hairs here so I'm just going to do remove stray hairs Bam, done. Did you see that? Totally done. Look at the before and after. Before, after. Look at, look at, we can give her some hair poof. So give her a little bit more volume there if we want to. And then cover up any hair gaps. Although I don't think anybody here has any hair gaps. I think we're fine. Let me try adding some catch light because I do not love the amount of catch light that I caught in these eyes. So let's just, that's it. Cool. That's good. So before and after. Give her a little hair poof, smooth out some skin, smooth out his skin. Not so bad. I'm actually going to go just to him here and I'm just going to pull down this. I think it's smooth him out like way too much. There we go. That looks good. The best thing is, boop, hit all of these and hit all of them and hit sync. Ba ba ba. Save. And then we sync the effect to nine images. And they're all now retouched. So the fun thing is I just messed around with a bunch of these, but I'm really only going to export that one. That one. That's cute, but I like the one with this. I was holding a cell phone here. That's what that was. Uh, this one looks a little too touched up. Let's just pull back a little bit. That's a little bit better. Let's pick my other favorite. That was a good one here. Yeah, this looks good. Oh, let's mark them all. I'm just going to export my favorites. And that's the nice thing is I can go through here and edit everything I wanted to, but I only export the ones that are my apps. Look how cute she is. I love that one. Only exporting my absolute favorites. I think this one, yeah, good before and after look. Just perfect, perfect cleanup. And there. So good. Just makes it look so much more refined. Okay, so we want that one. I want this one. Okay, so I just want all of my two stars. Boop, we're just these six. I'm gonna export those. And then I'm only paying for those exported ones, which is awesome because it's pennies, pennies. And you actually can get 30 of them for free. You just hit the link in the description. All right, so that's it. These are my final, final images that we kind of gone through, but you know, you can see over here all of the settings so you can pixel peep a little bit, but these are the images that I was able to create in just a short amount of time with uh, this lens. So let me know what you think of this lens. Is this one that you are going to pop down and get an order of course i have a link for you to do so in the description it is coming out when is it coming out hold on i don't even know the answer to that beep beep oh wow it's coming out like now the expected availability uh is the 14th okay so you could get this for all those new year's weddings
I don't know. You might need that last tax deduction before the end of the year. And let me know what you think. And uh, if you're still watching by the end of this, uh, please tell me what is your favorite holiday movie? I think no one's going to actually write this and no one's going to actually tell me the favorite holiday movie. Mine, by the way, is Nicolas Cage and the Family Man. Such a great movie. Old movie. If you haven't seen it, go see it. Cry your ass out. All right. See you next time.